the most anticipated game of the night. Iowa versus South Carolina. Caitlin Clark versus Aaliyah Boston. Logo shots versus power in the paint. There was so much hype around this game and this game definitely did not disappoint at all. At the tip, I was wondering how Iowa would defend and they made it clear from the start that their defensive strategy was to not guard the guards. Uh, basically, they were gonna plug the paint and dare South Carolina guards to shoot. Iowa discovered something that um, seemingly no other uh, South Carolina opponents were able to really, um, really find a lot of success in, was to exploit South Carolina's weakness. South Carolina is not a very great perimeter shot taker. Like they basically their 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 whole mission is to get in the paint um, and to really get scrappy in the paint and score that way. Um, yes, they can shoot, but they're not consistent shooters at all from three or even um, or e either, even sort of uh, right right inside the three point line. Like they're just not that good at it, and they dared them to shoot. Um, and I would def like I would exploit it that so much that I started to feel so bad for Raven Johnson. She was coming down the court, dribbling the ball, and Caitlin Clark was sagging so deep that Raven Johnson can just run, could just dribble to the, sh the free throw line and shoot. Um, and at one point, Caitlin Clark even um, sort of sort of. Uh, dismissed her hand in a way it was sort of like I'm not even worried about you go ahead do whatever you're gonna do I know you're not gonna make the shot and look at how far Caitlin Clark is playing off of Raven Johnson daring her to no. shoot from three you see her she's not even looking at her she swiped away with her hand and it was so like I felt so embarrassed I was like man that's so sad but like it was a smart defensive play because she's right Raven Johnson is not Historically, Raven Johnson is not a very good three-point shooter, and it made sense to basically dare the guards to do something um, because Iowa had the paint packed. Um, it was clear that South Carolina wanted to get the ball in the paint, but it's kind of hard to do that when you got four or five Iowa players sagging back, and they all have active hands, so it makes it easier to make turnovers. Um, also, it didn't help that Aaliyah Boston got into foul trouble early and sat for most of the first half. South Carolina was able to stay in the game with awesome play by Zaya Cook, who really was showing up and showing out. Also, uh, Cardoso really, really helped out when Boston got out of the game, making sure that she was crashing the offensive and defensive boards, and also making sure that she made her shots. I think she was, I think she made her first seven shots. Um, so very, very efficient on Cardoso's port part. And it was something that South Carolina really, really needed because Aaliyah Boston was out. On the other end, Iowa was doing exactly what Iowa does, running everything through Caitlin Clark. And it was working so well. I love watching Caitlin Clark and Monica Sanano pick and roll. Like it just, they get so many layups out of that. So many open and uncontested layups. And you would think that like South Carolina would be able to stop that, but it's a catch 22. If you, if one of your wing defenders um, goes down low to sort of to rotate and help um, so that Sonano doesn't get that open layup, then Caitlin Clark just passes it to the three point line and then they get a wide open three point shot. And we know how great Iowa it is at three point shots. And so that's, it's kind of, difficult to make a decision on what to do and we see how that turned out easy layups caitlin clark did what caitlin clark does make crazy shots pass the ball really well and drive to the basket this is what she does she's been doing this all year and she continued to do it in this game she had 41 points um and just very efficient even though south carolina has great perimeter defenders there's not that much you can do to stop Caitlin Clark. She's just that phenomenal of a player, which is why she won player of the year this year. 
In the third quarter, I thought that South Carolina was really getting back into the game. Raven Johnson started making a couple of threes, which meant that Caitlin Clark wasn't able to sag as much. She still was sagging, like, it, like Caitlin Clark was not um, really guarding um, Raven Johnson, but she did uh, take a couple of steps outside of the paint, which freed up some space um, for South Carolina's bigs to, to start working. Uh, the hard part was that when when Aaliyah Boston came back in the game from being in foul trouble, um, she basically got double teamed every single time she she got the ball, um, which she's that's happened before, um, but it just it just compounded everything, right? You you have the paint plugged for the most part because you have all the defenders sagging, and you're getting double teamed and you're not making certain shots that you would normally make um and it just it just made Aaliyah Boston not as effective and I think this was primarily because of the early foul trouble she got in a rebound Warnock and a foul called on Boston that will be her second wow looked like she was just pursuing the rebound and I will say something about the officiating um I really liked the way the officiating was in the first game, um, Iowa versus Virginia Tech, I felt like the referees let the, let both teams play, and they did, they were not calling ticky tack calls. And I think with the South Carolina versus Iowa game, there were a lot of ticky tack calls, a lot. And I really don't think that second foul on Boston really should have been called. And I don't think that third foul on her should have been called either. There were other um, very, very ticky tack calls on both sides um, in this game. And I was just like, man, just let these girls play. Like, why are you calling this ticky tack stuff? If it's not like blatant and crazy, don't call it. Um, and I think that really determined the game. Uh, yes, yes, I was plugging the hole. Yes, um, Caitlin Clark was making a lot of shots, but but um, South Carolina's woes really started with Aaliyah Boston getting in foul trouble and having to sit basically the entire first half. That really that really screwed them up for this game. Um, but the game really stayed close throughout. It really got down to the last 50 seconds or so. Um, and it really came down to an offensive rebound that Iowa got that really iced the game. And that was it. Iowa won. Uh, one thing's for sure is that uh, Iowa's coach, Lisa Bluter, gave her team a masterful game plan. When your team has a awesome defensive game plan and a rock star player like Caitlin Clark, it's kind of hard to lose. And that's what Iowa had. Like the, the defensive game plan was spot on. It made a lot of sense. And it was, it was a great execution from her team. It wasn't just that she thought of this great idea, but she also had players who were able to to execute and it made it pretty impossible for South Carolina to to make something happen and try to win this game now we are on to the championship Iowa versus LSU we have lots of questions will Iowa be able to use the same exact strategy same exact defensive strategy against LSU will LSU be able to stop Caitlin Clark so many questions and only one way to find out to watch the game on Sunday. So that's what we're going to do. After the game on Sunday, I will try to record a recap as well and just give my thoughts and analysis on how the game turned out, how the game plans worked, and ultimately who came up on top and why. We'll talk about that on Sunday. But until then, please watch my other video recapping the LSU and Virginia Tech game. Um, but until next time, bye.